you doing, folks? <laughs> Sorry? It depends whether you can see. Can you see it? Well, turn the lights off and open the curtains. It don't matter. I'm not, I'll open them. I'm not shy. Anyway, welcome to the first Sunday of May. I've done well to get out this morning. I'm ever so pleased. I was cooking breakfast at 7 o'clock, but still, that's another story. Uh, on a lighter point, I've just, just thought about the, the Biddeford run. It, it came straight to my mind when you said you were doing the pillions. I just had this little vision of this little Indian kid with 18 pillions. Yeah, on the bike. On, on his bike. No, nobody liked it, don't worry. Or a moped in Italy. A moped in Italy. Anyway, I've looked around the room and there's plenty of seasoned um, ride people. People who go out regular, people who do lots of tours. We've got a new, a new chap, first time here today. Do you ride with your friends? I've just passed the test. Well, that's hopefully this can... Uh, As can you've got friends, you're making assumptions. <laughs> So I want to split it into two halves, really. I want to talk about going on a ride out, and then I want to move on to leading a ride out. As um, Graham, sorry, as uh, David touched on, we do need more lead riders. It's easy for the regulars to do the rides, but it's nice for other people to actually take part and lead a ride. So, to attend or not to attend? That's the question. What I would say is, if you've never ridden in a group before, it's always best to find out who your enemies are as such. It's not so bad with an organised run from us because there's a known quantity. You look round the room and you know everybody's passed the test more or less, except for one who will probably pass his test in the next ten weeks or so. So, there's a known standard which is important because there's nothing worse than feeling intimidated by people you don't know. So you look around the room and you more or less know how people ride. It's quite simple. So what can you expect? Well, I always expect to have a bit of fun. That's the main thing. Fun, 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 fun. I'm just going to move this on because I forgot to press it. So, are there any rules? Yes, there are rules. There's lots of rules. There's legal rules and there's etiquette rules. We all know what the legal rules are. The first one is no speeding. No playing up, no acting like an idiot. We do try to refrain from overtaking within the group. There are stages, there are places where you can overtake and where I actually encourage it. So what are the goals? What are the goals of group riding? It's simple. David touched on it. He took people round uh, Belfast and they've just come back from Spain. Four of them, no, what's the five of you went? Yeah. Only one of them had a sat now, the rest all broke. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> but that's another story. So it's to take a group of people, like-minded people, on a trip, excursion, a tour, where most of them don't know where they're going. They've never been before. So they want to experience someone else's ride. Could be my ride, could be Graham's ride, could be anybody's ride. But you can go on the trip knowing you're going to be safe, you're going to get where you're going, and everybody's going to be happy. Right, so let's just turn over the page. Right out etiquette. We use two systems. As you all know the follow system, follow me system? As in, have you ever done any of these systems, the follow me system or the second man drop off? Good, you'll be the one who's interested then. <laughs> so, follow the leader. Dead simple. It can be three people, it can be ten people. There's just a few simple rules. The man at the front is always at the front, or lady, and the one at the back is always at the back and everyone else is in between. It's very important to clock who you're behind and who you're in front of. Because occasionally you'll go out on a Sunday in the summer and you won't be the only group. And it's very easy for other groups to infiltrate your group without you realising it and you end up following the wrong person. It's, don't worry, it's not a problem, but it can happen. So, it's always best to find out who the lead rider is, find out who the tail end Charlie is, and then just clock who you're behind. And we've got a tracer. Yeah, red tracer. Oh, you're always behind the tracer. Who's behind me? It's GS, big GS. Now, the trick is with the follow me system is you follow the person in front 
but you look after the person behind. That's the most important thing. It's to look after the person behind. Mr. GS, man, that's who you're looking after. So, the lead rider goes off up the road, he gets to the first island, he takes a junction, so he will probably slow down a bit. The number two person, whoever it is, it might be you now, you're looking, where's he going? Right, he's taking the second exit. So, you look to see where your man is, your person, your buddy, if you like. If they've lagged back a bit, you lag back. Give a signal, left or right, whatever, just to let them know that they've seen where you're going. Then it's up to them to look after the person behind them. There's no rush. This is how it works. You just, we call it, I call it the concertina effect. It's all right, got like squeeze boxes going in and coming out and in and coming out. And it's very, very simple. The other system is the second man drop off system. It sounds complicated, but to be fair, it's pretty much like the following leader system. The difference is. You have your lead rider, whoever's leading the group. You have your tail end, Charlie. And then everybody in the group floats around. You become, or you move up and become the second person. The second person is the one who's generally dropped off. It's ever so simple. You're riding down the road, you'll come to a junction, an island, or whatever, anything, and the lead rider will point to you that he needs a drop off. Now, the next thing is, when he points, he's not strictly saying stay there. It's, he wants the junction marked so you can look after the rest of the group. So now, you, in, in fact, you've not had just one buddy. You could have 15 buddies. You've got to look after all 15 of them. So it's up to you to find a suitable place where you're safe, but you can still direct whoever's coming up behind you. This is also where it's handy to know who's behind you. Because there's nothing worse than poor old tail end Charlie coming round an island and you've dropped off there and he's waiting thinking, go on then, go, bugger off, get out of my way. And you're standing looking because you haven't clocked who your man behind is. So if it's the same old GS man, there's you, GS man's always behind you. As soon as you see GS man, you know tail end Charlie's coming, get out of the way. It doesn't matter if you pull up in front of him. Just pull off take the inside course and let him overtake you. And then tail end Charlie will follow you. Dead simple. As I said, concertina effect. There's always gonna be pinch points in ride outs. And there's always gonna be points where you stretch out. Generally what we work on is, <coughs> if we know there's a pinch point coming up, the lead rider will slow down. Even if it's a national. He knows something's coming up. If you've got 20 people, if we've had some, it's 23 the most we took out last year, you, you took 23 somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've got 23 people to look after, you've got to think about them, not you. It's not your gig. You're, you're the person there to help everybody. You're not there to, as David says, bomb off into the distance and have a bit of a, a, bit of a blast. Your job is essentially to take 23 people, if there's 23, to the destination and back safely. So you start to slow down. As the group starts to slow down, this is one of the things we don't tend to do very well in our group. Formation. As you know, if you're taking a left, you get out on the right. If you're taking a right, you get on the left. But generally, when you're in group riding, the lead rider will take up the position Let's say, for easiness, the position where the bloke in the car sits to drive. Yeah? Simple. So the number two person takes up the inside one, outside, inside. So you, in effect, you're forming a stagger. Now, this stagger really works well to get you through obstacles. The last thing you want is somebody showing their slow riding skills and hanging back and thinking, yeah, I'll come in a minute, yeah, yeah. What you need to do is all bunch up. A lot of Harley drivers, they use what's called the H. I'm not so keen on the H. It's where you have one tube, one tube, and one in the middle. It's a bit too close. But formation, so it's... So what you can do is, as the squeeze box starts to open up, the lead rider will start to move around more. He'll start to take his vision route. You're planning for view and everything. Now, if you're happy in your, your position two, three, four, five, 
and you're only doing 50, and you can see as far as you can see, you don't need to keep darting from left to right. The man in front's doing that for you. He's telling you where the route's going. He's giving you an eyes up. So it's sometimes, although you've spent all these years developing this lovely, skillful manoeuvring about the carriageway, you don't always have to do it. It's not that necessary if you can see where you're going anyway. So that's just a little point I wanted to make. And the other thing is, after you've had a pinch point, there's always a chance that two or three could get slightly left behind. Lead rider will know this, so he'll take it steady. It, it might be a 30, 40, then into straight into the national. But he'll take his time and give you a chance. But really, the onus is on you. After you've had a pinch point, do your best to make up a bit of progress. Don't just think, oh, oh, here we go. Oh, they're off in the distance. Let's just take our time. The trick is to keep everybody together, to give the lead rider and give Tail and Charlie the chance to keep you together. The onus is on you to sort of make a bit of progress where it's necessary, thinking, well, oh, they're pulling away from me a bit. What's going on? Look at your clock and you think, oh, man, you're doing 45. It's a 60. Just chivvy it up a little bit. Because you might find out that the person behind you is getting a bit fractious, thinking, why oh, is he only doing 45 and a 60? But don't feel pressured. If you do feel pressured, that's your chance when you get to the stop, the, the comfort break, have a chat with the lead rider and say, I feel a bit pressured sometimes that we're going to be, and he'll have a word, but it ain't a problem. So that's the concertina effect, formation. Also, I think that this is the opportunity where you can actually ask the person behind you to overtake if you feel. Yeah, like call them good. through. You know, you might be in the, in the position in the middle and you're thinking, I don't fancy it. Move across and go, whoa, have a go. Enjoy yourself, fill your boots. We're not all speed merchants. Some of us like to have a nice afternoon out. <coughs> so what we do on that? Oh, did I mention the indicator? indicators? Pikey bought this one. It's, it's quite a good one, this is, the indicators. So you're all riding down and the lead rider puts his indicator on to left. <coughs> so as soon as the next rider sees them, they go left. And all of a sudden, you have all this ripple of red lights coming on, all indicating left. It's not really necessary. You could be going past a junction and everything, and the person at the junction could think, oh, oh, somebody's turning left. So what I would say is, clock your man in front, or your lady, clock what they've done, and when it's appropriate to put your indicator on, then indicate to let your buddies know what you're doing. Does that make sense? Super dupers. So where are we? I've done that, done that, done that. Let's have a look at the next one. By the way, if I go to 11 o'clock, shoot me and tell me to get off. So, <laughs> this is the second half. I, I think I've covered right. Does that all make sense? Does anybody not understand what I've said? Does, does it fit into place with what you, you expect or what you normally do? Brilliant. Oh, Christ, I must have done something right. So, leading a ride. We've talked about the etiquette of doing everything else. You've never led a ride before. There's a couple of things. You do need to be a member of the club, a full member. That means you do need to have passed your test. And you do need to be approved by the committee. That ain't a problem, because most people who are still associates don't like leading ride outs anyway. So, But if you want to lead, is there an helping hand? Is there an helping hand? Graham's there. You can, you can talk to Graham, or me, or Dave's there. You've only got to come up and say, there's loads of helping hands. I can look round and see three or four different subgroups. They've all got their own leaders who do their own. There's plenty of people to talk to if you want to do a ride out. So, <coughs> how do I get started? Get yourself a base. It might be, your f you don't have to be long. You don't have to be a long run. Sometimes, an hour has run down to the chippy and back and be just as much fun as going up Bodmin and over oh, Buddy Dartmoor. So you don't have to be a long run. What I would say is get yourself a basic idea. There's a road, there's a, actually a ride out protocol on the website. Has anybody ever read it? I knew you'd have read it. <laughs> it's somebody, somebody, uh, uh, a learned secretary and Terry, Spent a lot of time putting this, it's more of a sort of a legal document type thing. It's what you, etiquette, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. It's worth a read. 
if you're attending wide out, so going on tours, if you read it, it'll give you some good bullet points on what you should be looking at. So I would say go on the website and read it. Then once you've got your basic idea, you've asked for a bit of help, you've got a few ideas, you either see Pikey or you see Dave. And you say, can I do a ride out? There's an ideal opportunity coming up, the chippy run. Nice, easy ride out. If you've never done a ride out before, the chippy runs, they're only short rides. Or the Sunday runs, which tend to be a little bit longer. Like I said before, they don't have to be mega mileage. You tell you all about mileage, it's about having fun. That's just uh, pretty good. So, <laughs> kiss. I love the word kiss. I taught skiing for years. It's one of the first things you tell people. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't get cocky. Don't do nothing daft. Nice and easy. Pick a route you know. Establish a starting point and a time to assemble. The destination. Where you're going to go to. Most people like to go to a cafe, have a bit of lunch or whatever. Factor in petrol stops. So if it's a short run, 40, 50 mile, most people get there and back. Always remember that not everybody has ridden three miles to the meet. We're in Cornwall. Sometimes we meet at um, Cornwall Services, sometimes we meet at Hamburger Hill, sometimes we meet at Chile. Some people could have come from St. Just up to um, Cornwall Services. So make sure everybody's got enough fuel. All you've got to say is, we're going to do 120 miles today, will everybody get round? And they say, yeah, you're amazing. That's it, simple. So, cafe, lunch, coffee breaks. There are rules. You're strictly supposed to stop every hour or so. And don't forget, some of us older ones, we do need a toilet break sooner than the younger ones. So be realistic. I will say this, this is one. When you're taking 15 or more bikes around, it does take a lot longer. I always say if you allow 25 to 35 mile an hour, say 30 mile an hour, that's about what you'll cover on good roads. You ain't going to be making progress all the time. You're going to be taking it nice and steady. So if you do a 50 mile run out, it's going to take you an hour and a half. If you do a 100 mile run out, it's going to take three hours. You're going to have to factor a bit of a stopping. So always be realistic about your timings. <coughs> of course, at establishing an end point. One thing I do dislike, and a lot of people probably feel the same, is if you start at Chivy and you're going to finish at Chivy, I do think the etiquette is you should finish at Chivy. None of this, I'll see you halfway home and all that, because when somebody spent the time to put a full route together, you should really continue and finish the route, but that's one of my own personal preferences. You might disagree with me, but... <coughs> so, a point of tail end, Charlie. Get somebody you trust. There's, there's plenty of people in here. Graham quite enjoys doing Tail and Charlie because he puts his camera on and he videos you all and he takes it home and looks at it. You see a lot from the back and you learn a lot about the riders in front of you. You do. Always give a briefing. Like I've just said, just be concise, tell people what's going to happen. Yes, mate? Do you want to tell you, Charlie? Yes. Try it if you can, and I, I've got one. Make them stand out differently. Orange so face. Yeah. Orange face. It makes it easier for those people marking jumps. <coughs> There's so many headlights out there, so many yellow vests now that they just get lost in the seat of the ice. It's true. The orange face, it does work. I'm surprised we haven't got a few floating around in people's uh, rucksacks or boxes, really. Establish the rules. Tell people how you're going to ride it. If you're going to have a spirited ride, say, I'd like a bit of a more spirited ride today, but, you know, it's going to be okay, don't worry. Establish whether you're going to allow any overtaking. We don't generally allow overtaking. There are places where you can overtake, where you can... When I mention pinch points, Concertina, so you've all come... This, this is a classic, this is... You've all come to that three-lane island where you can go straight on in two lanes and you get an Indian file line of 15 bikes. And you're thinking, stagger up, lads and lasses. But not only stagger up, you can use two lanes. The golden rule is don't overtake the lead rider. But you can still be, you can have four bikes there, four bikes there, four <coughs> bikes there, four bikes there. Easy peasy, you're all together. And as long as you go off in your stagger, right, left, right, left, right, left, it doesn't really matter. Does that work out for you? 
It's, trust me, when you're touring, when you go abroad, the last thing you want is to lose somebody in a city. It's a big traffic light where it's going to take you 25 minutes to get round to get back for them. So, touring's slightly different. You've got to establish a different role with touring. You need a place to sort of aim for a meet or whatever, or a rule where you agree between yourselves, where you say, if, if somebody gets dislodged or lost, we'll go to the next junction and we'll wait for you. Because you can, somebody, you know, let's face it, buddy up. The man behind you, or lady, buddy them up. You know they've get lost, they're left. So you start dragging your heels. So the one in front thinks, why is he dragging his heels? Sooner or later, they realise somebody's got left, pull over, wait for them, join back up. Because some of these cities, foreign cities, you're on the wrong side of the road. The, the etiquette on islands is Spain. Nightmare, Spain. One thing they do in Spain, I'll warn you if you're going to Spain, is they go all the way round in the left lane. Now, you know us, we like to cut the middle off, we like to straight line the islands, but you'll get um, old Giuseppe and his missus going round in their old banger, and you'll go, oh, he's turning left. No, he ain't. He's going again, he's going again, he's going again. And they go all the way round, and you're thinking, what's going on? That's Spain. You've got to work out these little things. That's why it's always best to just hang back a little bit until you feel what's going on. So, establish what you're going to do. Follow the leader or second man. If there's only six or seven of you, follow the leader or work great. Probably up to ten you get away with. As long as you all trust your buddies. Look after the man behind. Plan for emergencies. It can happen. We've had people tumble. It can happen. <coughs> What you need is establish who the senior members are. Get a phone number off them. So if it's your first ride out, and if I'm there, or Graham's there, or whatever, or Dave, or just ask them for the phone number. Say, if anything happens, I need, I'll need some help. I'll ring you straight out. No problem at all. And finally, enjoy it. It's your ride out. Have fun. I don't think there's not much there. Oh, the debrief. It don't matter how advanced you are, you can always learn something. You can always learn things by asking other people. It's always worth having a chat with Chael and Charlie at half time or at the end, say, how did you go? Anything, problems? How was, the, how was the pace? Was this okay? Was that okay? So, <clears throat> always do a debrief. Work out what you can do better. And would you do it again? I think most people, once they've done a ride out, would say, I've enjoyed that, it's good fun. Showing people my roads. Graham's got loads of them. So, I'm going to say, ride safe. I've done well, it's only 25 to. I was going to do any other business in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Dual carriageways. It's a funny one, dual carriageways. So There's two, two elements to that. Keeping up with the flow of the traffic so that you don't actually disrupt them. And the bigger the ride, the more of an impact, therefore you've got to consider your impact on them anyway and potentially letting cars past you. So for me, the biggest bugbear is you overtake people, you pull in the left hand lane, and then you just relax and roll off, and then you've got five people sat on the outside lane, nowhere to go. Yeah. So you've got to be conscious as a lead rider. If you're going to overtake, you get up from the nationals stay there sufficiently that everyone can get past, clear the traffic so they don't disrupt them, then if you want to roll up a little bit, then's the time to do it. Not halfway through the overtaking process so that it looks, to be honest, pretty amateurish and all over the place. It's a good point, that is, to be fair, it's a good point. You, you've got to think when you're leading that it's not your ride. The worst thing you can do is do a, think, oh, nip this overtaking and there's a junction 50 yards past it, and then you're jamming your brakes, I'm putting your indicator on, and everybody's going, what? <laughs> it can happen. You've got to plan for the other people. You see what I'm saying? So, that touched on it before, you, the person behind you, your buddy, it's your best mate, it don't matter who it is, it's your best mate, you've got to look after that person behind you, you've got to get them safe and off wherever you're going. So, it all follows the same thing. Uh, the next big one's ride was supposed to be on the Sunday the 21st. As, uh, although you know there's three groups going up to um, Biddyford. Minehead. Minehead. 
some, somewhere it's a foreign well, country. It's in Devon, isn't it? It's over, over, over the border. Uh, I don't know whether anybody does want to ride out on that day or whatever. All you've got to do is you say, there's a few of us fancy a ride. Just tell Pike that you're going for a ride and there might be some others that want to tag on with you if you're not all going up to um, Moynet. So I'm going to end it there. I'm going to hand you back to the chairman to wrap it all up. And I'm going to say, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned some of it. It might not be what you want to hear or whatever, but I hope there's something in there. Just, uh, my old coach said to me, he says, you can learn some of it off everybody. You can be a beginner, you'll learn some of it. Pick the bits that you think are most appropriate to you. The bits that you don't like, well, work out something different. Oh, Adrian. Can I ask a question? Yes, please, or, mate. Or sort of comment on something that happened on one of our rides. And, um, Graham hit it on the head, really. Uh, Penny Gillum, at one of our, I think it was New Year's Day, Penny Gillum on slip. We're now going west, coming up to Kenneth's house. That's too much local knowledge. Oh, All right, <laughs> so yeah, we're trying to do a carriage, right? I'm from Cannock, Staffordshire. I don't know where All right, so we keep going. Don't load the country roads, that's lovely. And we're now hitting the dual carriage, right? And I don't know where I am, the ride on midway somewhere, and come out and do 38 mile an hour on dual carriage road. And it's the only time I've really, really been tempted to just do everybody and get up to 70. Left out to dry. I, I, I shit, shit myself, basically. I'm watching the mirrors, I've got my eyes like this, waiting for the heavy even that's going to 20. To be fair, I think if you're on a dual carriageway and somebody's only doing. 60, 55, 60. I think yeah. you're entitled to move over a lane and do 70 yeah. if you wish. I don't think anybody would worry about it. And, and, I, and I get the point of what Dave said earlier on that, but I think when we join the dual carriageway, so that was, uh, it's got to leave your own ride, but like I say, thinking back behind, when we're getting out onto them nationals, we need to get shifted. Of course you do. Because they're incoming and they're late now coming. So we've got all the etiquette. Um, but if it's safe to do so, or you know, it'll work well, only if it's safe to do so, obviously, but let's get there. Um, and then we can use the concertina effect, you know, as you said, we can regulate our speeds, um, you know, and then, and then they'll be behind safe as well because it wasn't a very nice place to be. No, it's not. Um, um, so we need to be mindful of that, I think. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll butt in, I'll be experienced the same. Yeah. I think, I think it's the quantity of traffic, it's the problem with big groups. Yeah. Can be left out of the place you don't want to be. Yeah, it is difficult. You know? <laughs> yeah, yes. So, so people, a lot of times I think when you're doing that, people, they're overtaking, they're doing their own right, they're not really looking at the person behind, thinking, can I help the person behind? But the classic is, you go on, you go to overtake, you're then in position three. Well, no one can really overtake you. You could almost move over to position one on the dual carriageway. There's space there. Someone's going to do the overtake as well. And all their people do is look on their front. Look at that. You go, oh, for flip, say, oh, my God, use your mirrors. Move over because they can see that I want to go in that position as well. And you can almost like stagger your riding. But no, you can't because they're, they're switched on. So you then got to drop back and you think, very irritating at times. And sometimes you can't drop back because the yeah, bike yeah. has closed you out. So you're, trying to, you're trying to make progress and keep the bike together and get moving, but as I say, well, as you said, that you know, when people do 38 on your carriage ride, right, they're just on their own ride. And I think when you're in a group ride, you've got to really ride everybody else's ride as well, not yes. your own bike. Yeah. You're your own ride, just go ride on your own. I, I, think that's the, I'm that's a lot, I think that's the point we try to make. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Not, it's not what you think, it's not an individual ride. You, no. You, you, you've got to switch on. You, you don't have to say, if you're in a group ride, you've got to switch on. That's one of the rules that's in, on the website, actually. When you overtake, move over, move to the inside to allow anybody to come in. Is it? Yeah. yeah. yeah don't get me wrong, they won't do 38 because they, that's what they decided to do. It's kind of what the snake had, had made happen. It, well, it's like, like, like a planning, it. isn't it, to be fair? If you're going down a slip road, yeah. you know that that slip road is going to lead you onto a carriageway where people are travelling at 70 or even more. Yeah. So you've got a duty of care to, to go for the national, personally, that's what I think. Well, I, I love it when I see that sign. Yeah. 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 Of course yeah. you do. Obviously, it's all fluid out there, and the lead rider may well have been up to something like that. I have no idea, so I wasn't up with it.
but just the situation developed. But it's not it's just Joe Kelly's race, it's what I said earlier on, it's when you've left a, a pinch point. Yeah. It could be an island, it could be a, a traffic light, it could be a right turn, a left turn. Really, you need to sort of get away from that situation and get back in the ride, yeah. rather than thinking, whoa, <coughs> that's a nice bird there. <laughs> you know what I mean? We've all done it anyway. Anyway, any more questions? I'll tell you what, you're fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. You know? I'm going to sit down.